Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. We're going to tie a CDC Biot Caddis to imitate the Granum or a Mother's Day Caddis. It's an excellent little pattern for imitating those huge hatches that happen every spring on many of our favorite rivers. I like to fish this pattern out on the crooked during the Mother's Day hatch. It can be pretty amazing fishing at times with fish slurping all over the surface taking hundreds of these bugs as they, as they hatch. First, the materials list for this pattern. Let's review the materials list in detail. For a hook, we're going to use a Daiichi 1100 in size 16 or 18. This is a standard dry fly hook. I've just recently discovered Beavis threads. And in this case, we're going to use a 16 aught black thread. It's very tiny and enables us to avoid bulk on the fly. For the trailing shuck, I'm going to use Zelon in a caddis amber. For the underwing, I have a natural CDC puff that I use. For the overwing, I'm using a Whiting Coque de Leon hen feather. On the thorax, I'm winding some peacock. And lastly, for the hackle, I'm using a whiting midge saddle, gr dyed grizzly dun. So let's get started with this pattern. I'm going to tie my thread on at the two-thirds point of the hook, right, right where the wing will ultimately set. Next, I'm going to tie on the Zelon right at the wing set position and wrap that back to the tail set. I'll take one wrap underneath the tail and then I'll clip off the excess real short. We're going to leave this as just a very short trailing shuck. Next, I'm going to tie on the Goose Biot and I'll wind that with the uh, translucent side back and the opaque side forward. When I take that first wrap, it will fold the feather and result in the opaque side back and the translucent side forward and give me that nice segmented effect that I'm looking for in a biot pattern. You'll note I've added a little bit of glue to the abdomen. I'm going to tie this biot into a bed of glue so that it won't break so easily in trout teeth. When I tie off the biot, you, you'll note I don't cross the thread directly into the biot. It's real easy to cut it or break it. And then you have to start over again. So I tie over the wound portion of the biot first and get a, a wrap of thread on that and then I can grab the rest of the material and make sure it's it's tied in tight before I clip the excess. So now we're going to take our CDC underwing and I'll I'll measure that against the uh, against the fly and I'm going to extend that just about the length of the trailing shuck and I'll clip off the excess and maybe a stray fiber here and there. So really make this fly float nicely having this extra buoyancy of the uh, CDC underwing. Next I've taken a a feather off my hen wing and I've stripped off about three-eighths of an inch of fibers and I've evened up the tips and I'm going to tie these in as the overwing on this pattern. 
The Coque de Leon hen wing feather, I really like the coloration on it. It's got a mottled uh, color in browns and tans that helps add some life and character to the pattern. Next, I'm going to tie on my whiting uh, midge dry fly saddle. This is a dyed grizzly and is an excellent material for this fly. And I'm going to immediately follow that with one barb off a peacock. And I've clipped that barb kind of midway because I want the narrowest portion of the feather or the barb to be able to wind these wraps real tight around the thorax and get the uh, barbules to lie closely together. Give me that nice thick peacock bed of fibers. And I'll clip off the excess and then I'll immediately wind in the hackle right over the top of the peacock toward the eye of the hook and I'll tie that off with a wrap or two right at the eye of the hook and clip off the excess. From here I'm going to add just a little bit of glue onto my thread. Since I'm working so tightly around the eye, I didn't want to glue the eye. And so I'll glue the thread and then drop into a whip finish and whip finish pre-glued thread. And that avoids uh, filling the eye with glue. So our final step is just a little bit of cleanup on this fly. A couple of fibers that might have got caught around the eye. And then I'm going to clip the hackle on the underside of the hook. And I'll clip this about half the gape of the hook deep. And that allows this fly to float very, very low on the water like an emerging caddis. It's one of the reasons that makes this fly such an effective pattern. We spin this around in the vise so you get a sense of what, we, what we're looking at from the underside. You can see the biot body, the nice developed thorax, the tight hooded wing with the uh, CDC on the underside. Really a great little fly. I think if you tie this and fish it, uh, during your Mother's Day caddis hatch, you'll be very happy with the results. This has been your Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you've seen, please like and share on Facebook. Thank you.